This video is sponsored by Incogni. One of the aspects I've always enjoyed about cycle touring is the challenge of finding somewhere to wild camp at the end of each day. Depending on where in the world you're travelling, this can vary in difficulty greatly, but I'm happy to report that here in Georgia, a country that we discovered is pretty relaxed about this kind of thing, wild camping for us had quickly become less about where are we hidden and not going to be disturbed, and much more about where's the coolest feasible spot we can pitch our tent. And our first wild campsite after leaving Tbilisi to head west looked like it was going to be no exception. Good, we'll go on a, a little scout to find somewhere to sleep. Yeah, we can push the bike up this potentially. Ooh, I mean, it's not bad, is it? I guess we could push ourselves down to that ridge. Yeah, I reckon we can, we can kind of go over there. It is chilly. Beautiful though, isn't it? Do you receive a lot of spam emails or frequent cold calls from callers that seem to know your full name and even where you live? Well, most likely your information is being aggregated by data brokers and then sold on to whichever businesses want to use it. This can include info like your home address, shopping habits, and even who your relatives are. Information you probably don't want just anyone having access to. Now, while it would be possible to contact these brokers yourself and ask them to remove your data, contacting the thousands of brokers out there would take a very, very long time indeed, which is where this video sponsor comes in. Incogni is a service designed to protect your privacy and take your personal details off the market. They do this by reaching out to data brokers on your behalf, requesting that your information is removed, and then dealing with any objections these brokers may have, bugging them until your details are taken off their lists. So if you'd like to reduce the amount of personal information these companies have on you, please consider checking out Incogni. And the first 100 people to use the code EDPRAT through my link will receive 20% off their purchase. And by signing up, you'll also be supporting this channel. So it's a win-win. My link is in the description below. Thank you very much, Incogni. Now back to the video. <laughs> How did you sleep? I slept very good. It was quiet, no windy. Yeah. And yeah, it was warm as well. Got quite an exciting route today. We've got two lakes. We've got Salka, which we can see over there, Lake Salka, which I think is a reservoir. And then there's Lake Paravani, which is maybe 30 miles from here, something like that. How are you? I'm great. What a gorgeous morning. <laughs> got a bit of a traffic jam coming up, but that's pretty usual here in Georgia, isn't it? Okay, it's arriving in Salka, the little town, and we are on the search for some breakfast. This is it good? Yeah. <laughs> exactly what I wanted. <laughs> After filling our stomachs with our favourite bean bread lobiani from a small bakery, we kept on moving along the banks of Salka Reservoir. We decided that our aim for that day was to camp by Lake Paravani, and while it wasn't too far distance-wise, between us and the lake stood a pretty sizeable hill. Nothing like what we'd faced in the north of the country, but big enough to make us sweat. Oh my, I see where we're going. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 
I think over there it will level up. <laughs> <laughs> there is always hope. Hope dies the last. Here in Kumakatli is also different. It's more green outside. And you can definitely feel it's getting warmer. Yeah. Hey <laughs> Okay, downhill to yes. the lake. Let's do that. Okay, okay. three, two, one, go. <laughs> At least it's a downhill that we deserve. Ooh, that's cold. It is cold. Wow, there we are. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> It is windy. Cool. So that's Lake Paravani. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know anything about Lake Paravani? Um, <laughs> <laughs> second biggest lake in Georgia. Is it? I think so. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> we found out later that it's actually the largest lake in the country. And as we sped towards it, we soon needed to make the decision to either stick to this smooth paved road or turn right and take a more adventurous track around its perimeter. Aha, that's the road, isn't it? Oh my, yeah, that's going to be tough. Okay, <laughs> decisions, decisions. No prizes for guessing which we chose. Oh, uh, yeah. rock. <laughs> yeah. Okay, nice. So I'll take it slow. Yeah, shall we find a place to camp soon? Soonish. Yeah. I kind of, I do want to get a bit of water before we do that, though. Yeah, the sun will go down in about ten minutes behind those mountains. Ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we shall find somewhere to stay. As light began to fade, we arrived at the first village along this side of the lake, Tambovka. Here, we stocked up with water for the night, and slowly made our way down the cobbled street. Careful so that they don't freak out and kick you. No, no. Signal. Yeah, do more, do more. Did it. What immediately stood out to us about this village was that many of the homes here had roofs topped with soil and living grass. Have you ever seen houses with grass on top like this? Never. Never. They, they look like troll houses <laughs> and they look so cute. I mean, I've seen the one that in the UK, even in the UK, they were like fascinating, but this one's... Oh, uh, like with the thatched roofs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This one's uh, magical. <laughs> As Tambovka sat at around 7,000 feet, we could imagine just how cold the winters must get here. So it was neat to see such an innovative way of adding a bit of extra insulation to help during the chillier months. So, shall we find a place to camp? Because it's getting very cold. Yes. Yeah. There's noodles and aubergine and carrots and onion. Onions. Yeah. Yeah. Quite nutritious too. Ooh, this is nice. Ooh, this is what we really need. Warm broth and noodles. That's it. Lots of vegetables. <laughs> I'll give you the bigger one, just for you. Mm. So kind. Yeah. This one was really good yesterday, actually. Mm. Ketchup with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sponsored by ketchup. Damashni. <laughs> we've got to, yeah, we've got to try and navigate our way around this lake because it's not obvious where the road is. Shouldn't be that difficult. We're just going to need to keep it on the left, don't we? Yep. But uh, yeah, going to be slightly rough riding, I think, today.
From a distance, Aspara, the second village we came to along this route, looked quite similar to the first. But as we pedaled closer, we began to notice one major difference. Every single building in this place was completely abandoned. House is empty. Yeah, everything looks empty. Realizing that we'd just ridden into a ghost town, we parked up the bike to take a closer look. Let's work our way in here. Yeah. Freaky, freaky. It's the front of the house. All the glass out here. It's from the windows, isn't it? Wow. It's a bit more, a bit more like it. It's a massive hole in the floor there. It's for the cows, so like when it was born, the weight, mm -hmm. yeah, the percentage of fat and so on. That's definitely been used for cows, isn't it? Yeah. And that's the front door. It's this little kind of patio area. It's very nice. Just be careful where you're stepping. The abandoned village of Aspara, we think. <laughs> Out the front door. Uh. Just be careful of catching yourself on stuff. Do you want to check out more? Yeah. yeah. Let's see if we can find one that looks a bit more intact, maybe. Definitely a Russian <laughs> It's a big bustle, isn't it? That's like two yeah. leases. This is definitely the most intact house we've seen so far. Is there a way up? No. It's like just storage, storage area. Maybe for animals, probably for animals actually down here. Kind of looks like the front door, but the steps are gone. A load of glass still. Lovely light. I mean, look at that view. Wouldn't be a bad place to wake up in the morning, would it? Hey, it opens. Floorboards are decent. Aha, so I guess a stove used to be here. You've got the hole where the chimney used to stick out of. This would have been a lovely house. Kids toys down there, all sorts. Protractors and a spoon. And a remote for some TV. of army men. Old photos. Oh wow, you should see here. There's like lots of bottles. Yeah? Oh yeah, look, it's all stacked up in there. What's all that about then? As much fun as it was exploring the old buildings of Aspara, we were keen to make some more progress that day. So we jumped back on the bike and kept riding. After 12 miles of bumping our way around Paravani, it was now time to leave the lake and rejoin the main road. <laughs> oh, look at this. Yama <laughs> Jobat. Yama Jobat. It's cute, sir. <laughs> Ahead of us was a long old stretch of downhill, and on top of that we had a very favourable tailwind. Two things which had just one outcome. Speed. We rolled into the town of Ninutsminder, 
just a few miles away from both the Turkish and Armenian borders. It says Armenian border over there. <laughs> and after stocking up on some fruit, a few bananas. The tailwind continued to be on our side. <laughs> nice. Effortlessly pushing us 20 miles through farmland, all the way to Akalkalaki, where we decided to stay the night. Close your ears. <laughs> Why would you do that? Hotel ideal. Neither of us have washed yet, but we decided we're just going to go out and get some food before places shut, because it feels like one of these places that stuff, restaurants close early. I mean, go. That's a goal, is it? I, mean, go. I guess so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Hazard everywhere. Stuff going on. As we suspected, the first few places we tried had already shut for the day. There's not, not a lot to offer here, but I'm sure we'll find something. But eventually, after some wandering, we did find somewhere that looked promising. That was a route. And I can't tell you just how excited we were for food. You deserve it. No, no, eat your bread, eat your bread, you dumb. Go on, eat your bread. Morning in Aka Akalaki. We got a couple of a couple of puris and some dog friends who we just gave some bread to. <laughs> and they will not leave us alone because we've still got more bread. <laughs> it is about 8 30 and we're gonna head off riding very shortly. So this is the main road and we we don't know when it gets better. <laughs> this is a train wagons. This is insane, is it? Look at this. Train has seen better days, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cross that only if I needed to, but it's something, is it? Yeah. Luckily, the road construction ended abruptly, and we could get back to some more comfortable riding. Our rough aim from here was to continue heading north, towards the regions of Imereti and Racha. But for now, our focus was on just enjoying more of this glorious descent. It was a beautiful day, the sun was shining, the scenery was stunning, and we both felt ready to crank out some serious miles. I had been driving for so long now that I forgot what I was leaving. I couldn't even tell you what road I was on, or if I was only dreaming. Don't you want to know? Don't you want to know that you're on the right? That was definitely the closest call we'd had on the bike so far, and I sure summed it up pretty well. Sometimes there are just arseholes on the road. 
But by and large, we did feel safe cycling here in Georgia. And from our experience at least, drivers like that were definitely the exception rather than the rule. So yesterday we've done 50 miles downhill and today it's also 25 miles downhill. <laughs> nice. It's great. What's your assessment of Georgian drivers so far, Aisha? Drivers? Yeah. There are like types of drivers. <laughs> there are some that respect you, they give you space, and they also wave at you. Second of all, is like pissed. <laughs> like, I'm rushing, I, I need to get somewhere. I, uh, I don't know, I, I have to get somewhere. <laughs> That's so annoying. They just they just try to overtake yeah. yes. I've, I've actually been quite ple pleasantly surprised by drivers here yeah no they're very nice yeah it's just some occasions is it when For cars sure. are just rushing somewhere and they're overtaking in the places where they shouldn't overtake and they see that we're coming and they still overtake yeah yeah but that's all right that's all right it's all right. Okay, it's all okay, all right. Okay. okay, it's getting too much of it. As we carried on through the valley, following the beautiful Kura River, I had the realization that I'd been here once before. So what's quite interesting about this road is that I actually have already cycled it. <laughs> I cycled it on the unicycle back in 2015 when I was just a wee 19 year old. Um, I, I used to put pins every, every, every wild camp that I, I would, every time I would sleep and put the tent up, I would put a pin on my map. Uh, and looking at it now, apparently I camped about four miles from here up this road. Okay, yeah, no, I do remember some of it. The railway is getting closer to the road. There was definitely a section where the railway was like super, super close. <laughs> yeah, it was here, wasn't it? Funky. Oh, I'd forgotten that shack. Yeah, I think it was. It was behind there. And there was a little bench just behind there. Here. Camp just in there, yeah. It's popping. Why over. did you do it there? Because <laughs> it was hidden. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was a guy there. He's going to be so bemused. <laughs> just be careful of the railway. I think you're fine. Это мы просто смотрели Эд, он шесть лет назад на одноколесном велосипеде путешествовал по миру, и его шесть лет назад он, получается, сзади ночевал. So check out the spot that I found. I originally was looking at camping or sleeping in this little building here. So I walked up over the tracks from the rows and found this little gem. Look at this. So this is perfect. We've got a little bench. We've got a table to do some cooking on. We've got a tree to rest the unicycle. And we've got a nice patch of ground there to put the tent. This is great. <laughs> yeah, there we are. It was just here, a little bench. That's where I slept when I was 19. I think it was a wet day as well. Amazing campsite. Gonna get on the road shortly, get the tent down, eat my porridge, and then we'll be on the road. So we've got 111 miles to Tbilisi, and I'm hoping to do that in two days. Um, we'll see how that goes. But first we're going to eat some porridge, because that's important. <laughs> You've got to eat. That's fun to see it again. There we are. If I find footage from that time, I will intersperse it now. Yeah. And now we're already on a pandemic, on a two wheels. It's possible. <laughs> You never really expect to revisit past wild camps. Sure, it is just a patch of ground I once threw my tent, but being back in exactly the same spot, it was difficult not to reflect. A lot had changed over the last six years, 
but I'm glad that the one thing that hadn't was the fact that I was still out in the world making these wild adventures happen. And of course, this time around, it was wonderful to be able to share the experience with Aishola. Can you imagine a 19-year-old Eddie searching for somewhere to camp? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I don't know how our lives intersected. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching this instalment, and I hope you'll join us next time as we continue pedalling north towards some of the more intriguing locations Georgia has to offer. See ya. If you'd like to watch the next episode right now, you can for as little as $2 on Patreon. And if you're feeling really impatient, you can head over to Vimeo and binge this entire series from start to finish over there. Your support is greatly appreciated. 